We all know about Tecmo Super Bowl on the NES, one of the greatest football games of all time. Before that, there wasn't much in terms of good football arcade games. However, there was a long tradition of text-based computer football sims, one that mostly goes forgotten these days. And today we're going to look at what many com people consider to be the all-time best. You know, I know about these games. You see, back in the late 1990s, when I was in middle school, our family's computer was kind of underpowered. It would have been a good machine in 1993, but it really wasn't that great in 1999. Anyway, because of all this, I became interested in the abandonware scene, mostly because those were the only games I could get to work, and I tried out a number of these games. They might not look like much, but the gameplay is actually quite solid. Now, some of these games were direct computer translations of tabletop football sims. Others were designed specifically for the computer, and the vast majority were text-based. Many of you might be more familiar with the graphic-based games. However, if you were deeply interested in computers in the mid-1980s, chances are that you spent more time playing text-based sims than anything else. In fact, if you look through old issues of Computer Gaming World, you'll notice right away just how many text-based war games were featured. Tactical war games were apparently all the rage. This is back when companies like SSI dominated the gaming scene. Now, if you play those games, you'll think that they're simple, and some of them are. A lot of them, though, are actually pretty complex, and that's true for the game we're talking about today. Here it is, XOR NFL Challenge, first released in 1985. It looks simple, but looks can deceive. The game actually has a very complex play-calling module that is pretty realistic. It's absolutely worth trying, even though the X's and O's might seem a little corny today. But first things first, you need to know how to actually play the game, and it's not as easy as you think. You see, you have to understand the concept of mounting discs in DOSBox. The problem you'll encounter if you try to run the game is this, can't open pbp.nfl. It turns out that the pbp.nfl file is included with each season disc. Now there are a lot of season discs for this game out there, but I'll tell you more about that later. Every season disc has an NFL file for each team, as well as files that determine the play-by-play -play and some other stuff. But, you know, the problem is that this game was first made in 1985, it's back when most people didn't have hard drives. So the assumption was that you were using one floppy disk drive for the game program, and either another drive for the teams, or you would take that first disk out and put in the team disk when the program prompted you to. Yeah, these were the stone ages of computing. So what you need to do is you need to mount the disks right. You see, back when I started, I mounted the NFL directory, the one with the game, as my C drive. What I need to do to overcome this error is to mount one of the season disks to another drive as a floppy drive. So to figure out what drive letter you need, you should look for this config.nfl file in your NFL challenge directory. You can edit it with a text editor. See how mine says B? That means I need to mount my season disk to the B drive. Once you've done that, run the game again. This time the game will load. Anyway, I apologize that the solution is kind of long-winded. Once you understand the concept of mounting directories as disks and DOS box, though, it's actually pretty easy to solve these kind of problems. But there's one other problem you'll run into. When it's time to start calling plays, you'll notice that your formations are all colors, probably not what you expected. What you need is the user manual. Now, I actually have two different scanned copies. One is just the user manual. The other one, the one that you want, has all the play diagrams. This is the first page of the playbook, which was a literal spiral-bound playbook that came with the original game. Now, once you read a little bit of this, you'll start to realize what you've gotten yourself into with this game. This recommendation to make a game plan, for example, is actually pretty important. There's also talk here about different risk and gain categories for each play. The designer of this game went to great lengths. In fact, he worked with a number of NFL teams to put this together. And it's simply brilliant, and it was far ahead of its time. In fact, I think that it's actually better than a lot of the current text-based football simulations. Plays in Group Y tend to be short yardage, low-risk plays, basic runs from formations with two setbacks and three tight ends. Blue plays are I-formation plays, most of the runs are lower risk, while the passing plays are higher risk. That makes sense, of course, you're usually thinking run out of the I-formation unless you want to confuse the defense a little bit. The purple group gives you a single running back with two wide receivers and a tight end, the single setback. Of course, some of these plays look pretty familiar if you're used to video game football. I think the red play group is the pro set formation, judging from the description. And as you can see, there's a lot you can do outside of that formation. And finally, there's the yellow play group, all from the shotgun. 
Now, you think they could have just named the yellow group shotgun, but I mean, what do I know? I think that they called the groups after colors to take advantage of color displays or something. Anyway, it's not a huge number of plays, but it's more than enough to give you an idea. The defensive options in game are a bit more simple. There's not a huge reason to stick with the manual. Of course, if you're serious about defense, it's kind of a good idea to know exactly how the covers is differ. The number of options you have is nice, though it's also nice that you don't have an absolutely overwhelming number of things to choose from. And the gameplay itself is fascinating. Sometimes you'll feel like it's easy to guess what the computer will do. Other times you'll be beaten even if you thought that you made the right choice. The game has some pretty odd animations when you manage to score a touchdown. The extra point animation is certainly unique, I'll give you that. There are also instant replays that will pop up automatically when something important happens. And you know, that's about it actually, the rest of the presentation is pretty simple. Now if that were all there were to this game, it would have been really impressive for its time. However, this game lives on to this day. Why? Because it came with a roster editor. So you can always use this re.com file to edit the rosters to your heart's content. Or you could just change them using a text editor. That's right, the rosters, the abilities, and all of that stuff are stored in plain text format, which means that this is a dream for anybody interested in modding. Now, if you look around, this version, the complete edition, is really the one you want to download. It includes user-made leagues going back to the 1960s. There are also tons of classic college football teams to choose from. And of course, you can always lose yourself in the all-time all-stars. So you've got a game here with a pretty nice chalkboard feature, a great play calling feature, and a set of seasons that is basically limitless. No wonder people are still playing it 40 years later. Now, I should mention that this game came with some extra stuff that you won't have if you just download it and play it. But I've already mentioned the manual and the playbook. Actually, there were two playbooks, one for offense and one for defense. The game also came with a copy of the Illustrated NFL Playbook, a 1982 book that is perfect for computer quarterbacks. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this book or not. If you haven't, you really should think about getting it. In my opinion, this book is one of the best introductions to the world of play calling and football games that you can find. Now, you see, back in those days, computer games were not just about the game. You got all that extra stuff along with it. It was great for immersion. Way back in 1985, this was by far the best of the computer football games. It's interesting to note that it cost $100 back then. So keep that in mind when you go download it for free from some sketchy source. Now this game was actually likely worth the $100 back then because it remained relevant for years. So check this out for an example. This is the December 1987 edition of Computer Gaming World, about two and a half years after the game came out. The feature article was a long comparison of various football games. Most of these are games that you guys have likely never heard of. Well, I'm going to slowly track down as many of these as I can so we can play them and talk about them on this channel, of course. Anyway, NFL Challenge was referred to as the cream of the crop again, even though it was a few years old by this time. And then the game died. By 1990, XOR was out of business and the dream was dead. But the game is still fondly remembered to this day and comes up frequently on message boards. Now, it's not a perfect game, and there were a few plays like the free safety blitz or the short yardage inside charge that are overpowering and basically are cheating. But it's still a great game despite its flaws. It's a ton of fun to play, even after all these years. And you know, that's the most important part. I mean, realism is important, sure, but these are games at heart. They need to be fun to play. This one is, and it's a game that you really should try if you haven't yet. Don't be worried about the old-fashioned text-only graphics. Focus on the game, get yourself immersed, and you will love it.